Hello world, today we are going to be looking at Escape the Dark Castle, the game of atmospheric adventure and this cover is very atmospheric and sort of sets the tone for the game in my opinion. You've got this bleak black and white cover image with the foreboding dark castle with this full moon rising up behind it and three vampire bats fluttering around the parapets and if this cover doesn't evoke strong memories of uh, fighting fantasy, the 80s and all that stuff then a lot of the appeal of this game might be lost on you. So anyway, let's flip over to the back cover and have a look at what it says. Well, you've got a little bit of blurb, a couple of uh, example artwork uh, pieces, and if you don't like this artwork, then again, you're really not going to enjoy this game. Now, this is actually the Kickstarter edition. Um, there's a little label down here that tells me, but also it mentions it's got five boss cards. Now, unfortunately, the retail version um, has less cards in the box, so I think you only get three boss cards, which is a little bit unfortunate, um, but there is a Kickstarter coming up, so hopefully uh, you might be able to pick up uh, the extra cards if you've only got the retail version, but we'll have to wait and see. I believe that's launching on the 1st of June. Now, it does say here pretty clearly what the game is. Escape the Dark Castle is a simple fantasy adventure game with a focus on atmosphere, storytelling, and player cooperation perfect for newcomers to tabletop gaming. Now basically you are prisoners, one of these aforementioned people here, and you are trying to escape the Dark Castle and you're going to have to go through 15 uh, sort of challenges before facing the final boss and if you all survive you finally escape. Now to help you on your way you're going to get some item cards and you roll your dice to defeat the enemies and that's it. Um, so there's not a huge amount of choice in the game uh, but you need to read the flavour text and really soak up uh, the atmosphere. So anyway, let's get inside the box. Now I have already opened this copy, so um, it's all unshrink wrapped, etc. So let's get inside. When you open up the box, you're going to get the rule book, which is not a particularly lengthy affair. It's 11 pages, uh, but only 10 of those are actually rules, and realistically, only sort of like eight of those pages are actual rules you need to read. The rest is more what's in the box and look out for our expansions and stuff. You do have some pencils because yes you are meant to manually write things down so if I fish out all these cards, oh, quite a lot of them, oh god, oh that's a problem, right hold on. Okay well having done battle with the insert uh, you can see uh, the pencils are for recording information down on this little pad, basically your, your health. Uh, and then you've got all these cards. So you've got your heroes, of which I use the term very loosely. They're not particularly heroic and they're very unattractive. So you've got the cook, the miller, the smith, the tailor, the tanner and the abbot. Now I'm not sure if you get all of those in the retail version. You've then got the first adventure card and then a random section of cards. You're going to pick 15 and then right at the bottom you'll pick one of the five or three bosses to face to uh, finally escape the Dark Castle. You also have, hopefully a little bit easier to get out, a load of item cards. And these, uh, for example, you might get the Golden Axe if you've got the Kickstarter version, but if not, you're going to get all this stuff. So stale loaf of bread, rotten apple, uh, rotten shield, brew of might, etc, etc. Now, these, you basically shuffle these up and you're going to get one card each at the start of the game. And whenever you defeat a baddie, you get to draw the bonus little card. And then the final bit that you need to pay attention to are the dice. So you've got the white dice for the characters. So the smith, the tailor, the miller, the tanner, the abbot, the cook. This version also has the golden axe. Then you get a load of black dice, which are for the baddies. So I'm just going to give you a quick demo game. Now for this little demo game, I'm not going to spoil too many cards, so I'm only going to spoil one of the adventure cards and one of the bosses. So this stack here would normally be 15 cards, you then slide the uh, boss underneath and put the starting card on top. Now the abbot and the cook, they have their own unique dice and that means, for example, the cook is more likely to have, I believe it's might is the fist, um, cunning is the eye and wisdom for the star i believe let's have a quick check of the rule book yeah so might cunning and wisdom and uh depending on how many players you've got is going to depend on how many hit points so for one to two players you get 18 hit points per character so you have woken up to find out that your cell is open so turn over to begin and that nice cover artwork is repeated here 
After years of incarceration in the depths of the dark castle, you finally break free of your cell. In a small stone room adjoining the cell block stands an old wooden chest. The lock is open. Draw an item card per player now. So there you go, let's just get those. So I've uh, got the dice out and also assigned the items to each character. So liquid luck to discard to re-roll your character dice. And for the cook, warped cudgel, a one-handed weapon, which once per round, when you roll a might, you may roll again and choose which of the two results you apply. So that's quite useful. So there you go. Anyway, let's continue. You hear footsteps approaching. You must not linger here. You make for the exit, slipping away and disappearing into the darkness. Turn the first chapter card now. So at this stage, we'd go through the various uh, chapter cards and we'd work our way through. And finally, we get to the 15th and final card. We might have picked up some extra items. Let's say uh, we did. Let's just grab some random card. There you go. So Rotten Shield for the cook and what have we got for the abbot a stale loaf of bread discard to restore two hit points to your character now there is an ability to swap cards between you now you could do that at this point because we're about to enter the next part of the castle so you could choose who's going to go in first now the cook because he's got a weapon and a shield i'm going to send her in first or is it he it's hard to tell uh, I think it's a, a she so she will go in first and face whatever waits us here right some horrible spidery wibbly thing uh, this chamber is flanked by caves and littered with gnawed bones a guttural growl rings out as something emerges as a group choose one option and begin combat so we can either take the base on head-on which is going to do us three damage we can use hit and run tactics which is going to do us two damage well Three damage could kill us quite quickly, and you never know, I might only have like ten hit points left by this stage of the game, maybe even less. So, although this is a simpler test, you might be tempted by hit and run. Now, this little symbol here means roll one black dice per player, so I'd be rolling two dice, whereas here, effectively, I've got three dice already rolled with these results, and a further two dice. So I'm going to go with the first option. So let's go with taking it head on. So we need to roll a, uh, what is it, a cunning and a wisdom. Well, the abbot's good at rolling wisdom and the cook's okay at uh, rolling um, cunning. But um, yeah, might and wisdom would have been better, but there you go. So what we do is we now roll our dice to try and kill it. And you kind of want to do it in a particular order potentially because... Um, Basically, if at the end of you rolling these dice, you haven't taken away all these dice up here, then you apply the damage result. So let's roll. So I've got double fist, which uh, has this shield, which is a block icon, and he's rolled a fist. Now, I could discard my liquid luck uh, to re-roll this, and here I could choose to re-roll this because, um, you know, maybe I want to take out here. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to re-roll it because I can always keep that result. Well, I've rolled it again, so that's going to block one of the damage, and my Rotten Shield is also going to reduce the amount by one. So what I could potentially do, and I'm not sure if this is in the rules without double-checking, I could say I use the Rotten Shield to reduce the damage from three to two, and then I use the block here to... Actually, I think the block ignores all damage. I'd have to double-check in the rule book. Unfortunately for the Abbot, he's going to take uh, three damage, so maybe... I would discard um, my loaf of bread to effectively make that one hit point loss. So there you go, we need to fight again, so let's go again. Excellent, we've now rolled what we need. We have defeated the beastie and we get to draw a new card. So let's draw a new card. Brew of Might, discard to apply a single might at any time. Well, maybe what I'm gonna do is I'll give that to the abbot because if I give it to the cook, I'm gonna to have to discard a card because you can only actually have two items per uh, character, so that's another limitation. So anyway, we've fought our way through the whole dungeon, and we're now ready for the final boss. And it even says here, do not read until you've completed the last chapter card. This is it. You have reached the final challenge. One last obstacle stands between you and your freedom. Turn over now. Okay, before I turn this over, if you don't want to have a boss card spoiled, uh, you might want to skip to the end of the video. So anyway, let's flip this over. It is the shapeshifter. I can assume the form of your greatest fear. 
Now this guy's a bit of a problem. Doubles only score a single hit, and at the end of each round you re-roll all the dice. So effectively, because of these symbols, he's rolled a fist, a fist, so two might, two stars, which is a cunning, and then two dice, one for each character, which is an eyeball and another fist. Now, normally doubles would be great, but unfortunately against this guy, they don't do much, and he's going to do three damage, which is not good. So anyway, let's get fighting. So let's roll our first attack. So we've got rid of those two. However, haven't got rid of all the dice. Causes us three damage each. Actually, let's get rid of this brew of might. Now, I can't remember, actually. Maybe there is something about losing these cards. I think one of the bosses makes you discard um, your items. I'll have to double-check the rules on that. Anyway, let's have another go. So a double fist would normally take him out, but it doesn't. So he does us another three damage. And then that takes care of that. Uh, I've rolled no might there, so that's no good. So we take another three damage. So he's done us nine damage each. We could possibly be dead. And then finally we defeat him and we have escaped. Very unlikely thing to happen in reality. Anyway, let's have a quick talk about the game. Well, there you go. That was Escape the Dark Castle. Got everything put back away. Uh, if you like this art style, if you like the fairly simple gameplay you're probably going to love this game it's got lots of atmosphere lots of evocative nostalgia but yeah it's not a stellar game it doesn't have huge amounts of complex choices it doesn't have glorious high quality artwork um, but i i like it. it it sets out to achieve its goal and it does it now this insert whilst it is quite lovely it's no good for sleeving although to be honest sleeving these giant cards and these little cards could be tricky but yeah i, I can see me maybe been in the insert and doing a, a custom foam core insert with some sleeve in done if I can get it done. Uh, partly the problem is because it's black backs so this is going to kind of mark quite quickly and part of the fun of the game is not knowing what's coming up. But uh, if you want to see an alternative take on the game, a uh, slightly more negative one or very negative one, go see Tom Vassell doing a, a look at this game over on the Dice Tower. I quite enjoy it. Um, my biggest criticism of it is it, it's really, to my mind, a 10 to £15 pound game, but it actually costs a little bit more than that. I think it's you know, kind of over £30 pounds at full retail, so that's a bit of a shame. Uh, however, expect to see a bit more coverage of this. Uh, I might actually do a playthrough, uh, but for the unboxing, I, I wanted to kind of minimise the spoilers. But you're also going to have more coverage because there are expansions for it. For example, this one here, Escape the Dark Castle, Adventure Pack 1, Cult of the Death Knight.